guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to my garage and of course to the 458. So what are we here doing today? To protect against when the car is at car shows, uh, people uh, maybe being a bit too enthusiastic at the car or people damaging the car and thinking that I won't notice. Also if there's been accidents with the car, if the car is shunted in some way shape or form then um, you need protection to be able to ensure that you know or you can prove that it wasn't you at fault, if of course it wasn't you at fault. So how do you do that? Well you do that now with modern tech that you have nowadays in the form of dash cams. So you'll note that I have, you might be able to see it from there, you might not, we already have fitted in location uh, a dash cam. Now I've researched this extensively and pretty much the best dash cams on the market are Blackview. Um, I've gone for the 900X, which in effect, the X is the new variant of the 900S, and what that provisions is um, parking capability and intelligence for what they call battery magic. Now, I'll just go into a brief summary overview of what that means. In effect, that um, the, the cam will work and will record in 4K in the front camera, HD in the back camera, um, when you're driving along and when the car is running. Um, you can then set it into a different state, what's called parking mode, when the car is actually parked and the ignition is off so that you can set it in various different configurable states to be able to monitor the car so if people are you know around the car it's got sensors in it so it can sense and start recording for example if you've configured it the way it can sense and start recording um, when people are near the car so it's got a proximity sensor in the dash cam and there's all different variations of configurations you can have when the car's parked but obviously if the dash cam is switched on and is functioning when the car is parked it could be draining a battery and Ferraris are very very sensitive on battery drain it doesn't take much to trigger it to stop some of the electronics working if the battery goes below a certain threshold so you you overcome that with these dash cams with intelligence built into the dash cams and that intelligence in the in black view is form in the, is in the form of what they call battery magic now they had a battery magic unit a separate battery magic unit that you used to be able to connect to the battery and connect to the actual dash cam and it monitored the battery and would stop the dash cam recording if the battery got below a certain threshold well, the 900X version, as opposed to the 900S two-channel version, the 900X two-channel version has that intelligence capability built in. So in effect, it's inbuilt into the dash cam. So that's pretty cool. So that's why I bought the 900X. Sorry, I've gone on a bit there, but unfortunately, a lot of this is techy, so it, it can get a bit boring, but there you go. So I've actually done some part of the actual configuration and wiring of the system. Um, we'll show you some pictures um, of the car disassembled, of me actually putting the wiring in for the, for the front dash cam and the wiring in link, linking the front dash cam to the rear dash cam, um, which is you know, quite uh, extensive, the amount of um, trim that you have to remove to be able to fit it properly, otherwise it looks a bodge. Um, so you know, there's various ways also of connecting the system. Now you have to make sure obviously you connect the dash cam to the fuse box, you have to have an ignition switch power supply so it can tell when the ignition is switched off to be able to switch the unit into parking mode and you have to have uh, a full battery on so you have to have a, a supply to the unit when the ignition is switched off as well so you have to have a full on battery supply irrespective of whether the ignition is on and off and you have to have a switch supply as well so that the system can know when you switch the ignition off to put it into parking mode. So how do you do that? Well. There's various different fuse boxes on the Ferrari 458. There's one behind the passenger console area. There's one be, um, underneath the, the steering column by, on the driver's side. There's also one in the rear behind the driver's side as well. And I believe there's, there's, there's also a, a fuse box located near the battery as well because there's an ECU, ECU unit on the battery that monitors just the battery and manages just the battery. There's various EC, other ECUs on the car as well. You've got to be very careful of that as well. So first thing, when you're messing around with the electrics on a car, especially a car like a Ferrari, you disconnect the battery. And thankfully on this one, this car has got stop start configured. And what that, what that enables with regards to the battery disconnect is it's got a separate earth post um, for connecting the battery. So you literally just have to unclamp this particular con connector for the earth post and just lift it off this this main earth post so you just have to literally disconnect this this one clamp and lift it off the post and the whole um, battery is disconnected all, all the electrics are disconnected um, but you've got to be very careful when you're messing around with electro electronics and electrics on these sort of cars uh, because you you don't want to short something out accidentally you know if you're using a pair of pliers 
pair of tweezers or something, or a screwdriver, and you accidentally cross across the contacts of a fuse, say for example, and short something out, um, you could fry an ECU on these things. They're quite sensitive, so you know, and those cost thousands. You do not want to get into that. So obviously, you make sure that you wire things up properly and you disconnect the battery first of all before you touch anything. So, um, by the way. You may notice I'm not wearing any shoes or any slippers. The reason being is because I'm moving around inside the car a lot. I don't want to damage the car. So obviously I'm just in effect in bare feet um, because I don't want to damage the inside of the car, the seats, etc. where I'm moving around in the car. So if you're wondering why I'm not wearing shoes, that's why. Connecting into the different fuse boxes on the on cars, the best way to do it electrically wise and the most secure tamper-proof way and the proper way, um, so as you've not got any misconnections and any problems, and that you're making sure you're fusing the system properly, is you use what's called fuse taps. Now, this is the modern way of doing it. Back in the day, we didn't do this when I was a youngster because you didn't have this sort of technology available. Um, but what you do nowadays is you use a fuse tap, and the fuse tap provisions you the capability to take out um, where you want to connect your new connection, where you want to make your new connection, you take out the existing fuse, in this case it's 20 amp, and this is the actual ignition switch, so this goes to the cigarette lighter um, on the system, and so you take out your existing fuse, you would put the existing fuse into the bottom section of the fuse tap, what that provides is, that provides um, fusing still and, and um, security and protection for the existing circuit. So it retains the existing circuit which comes through here, through that fuse and back down again from the in and out of the actual section of the electrical circuit. And then the fusing of the actual additional connection, which is this, which is going to connect across to the dash cam, you put the fuse in in the top that how you want it to be rated for the top of the dash cam. Now this fuse could be, could the, the, the dash cam actually only pulls about two amps, maximum two amps the dash cam pulls. So it's very small amp, amount of amp, amperage it pulls. I, you, I've put a 20 in there anyway because this bottom circuit is fused at 20 and that's gonna be fine because the dash cam actually has its own fuses which I'll show you um, on the cables and they have their own separate fuses. So I'm gonna, there's no point in putting um, obviously this is this is managing the bottom circuit the existing car circuit 20 amps You shouldn't put a rated fuse above that because it will just blow the bottom one anyway um, If it, in the top circuits obviously your new circuit you make sure that you fuse it at least the amount of the bottom circuit is or less Preferably less but in this case I'm putting in a 20 which is fine, which is fine now in the other circuit that circuit is for um, when you're with the ignition switch circuit so that's going to the cigarette lighter cigarette lighter switches off when you turn the ignition off um, so that's fine that will that will give the sensing to the dash cam to, for it to know when I've switched the ignition off now for the full battery supplies again remembering that the dash cam only pulls maximum of two amps it's actually between normally between one and two amps the dash cam pulls so we're going to put it into the actual hazard warning lights. It actually recommends you to, to plumb this um, circuit, which is actually the full on 20 um, full on uh, non ignition switched circuit where the battery is connected through all the time, where the circuit is connected through all the time. It actually recommends that you connect it to the hazard warning lights. And so this one will be connected to the hazard warning lights fuse. And that is rated at 7.5. So I'm rating this one at 7.5 as well. Um, so I've got 7.5 amps and the 20 amp there um, just because that's the actual taps that I'm taking off um, and the actual um, draw though is a maximum of 2 amps on the dash cam anyway and uh, like I say downstream from this for all you electrical gurus are saying he's fusing it at 7.5 and he's fusing it at 20 amps well that's too high a fuse rating the actual dash cam has its own separate fuses. It has a, a two amp fuse and another fuse. I couldn't see what the rating was in the other fuse, so I've done all those checks. It has its own fuses, so it will blow those fuses first, which is exactly what I want it to do. I want it to blow those fuses first and not these. So it has its own dash cam fuses, but obviously I don't want to rate these any higher than the actual circuitry should be for the Ferrari. So I'm protecting the car. Obviously the key thing here always is to protect the car. So in this trim, of the car, this this actually this top trim panel um, actually um, disconnects and pulls out. You have to undo various screws, which are behind the uh, switch plug unit here in the centre of the of the roof trim section. Remember, in this car is a spider. 
then this pulls out you have to be very careful of course whenever you're removing trim of a ferrari uh, make sure you don't damage the lever so you've got to be extra careful all the time um, and you know I, I was very very careful very methodical how i removed this you pull this section out it then exposes the existing wiring loom that runs across here obviously you've got various sensors for when the actual roof closes to make sure the actual roof has latched properly on the spider so there's there's a, a whole existing wiring loom that runs across there so what I did was I ran the new cables, two new cables, one to connect the power to the actual dash cam and one to connect this dash cam to the actual rear dash cam. So I ran those existing cables around the old, the, the pre-existing wiring loom, ran the new cables around the pre-existing wiring loom so it's all properly connected through and I ran the new cables out at the bottom of the, of the trim, of the, of the um, roof trim and then plugged them into the actual dash cam and then fitted the dash cam. So we actually have the, the, the power cable to the dash cam running along this whole trim, all the way down the side trim, down into the actual fuse box section. So I've ran that all before and we're now going to be connecting. I'll just put some light in there so you can see a little bit better. And we're now going to be connecting into that fuse box and pulling out to this, this section of the trim you have to be very careful as well because it's leather and you've got carbon fiber here so you have to make sure you don't damage the carbon fiber when you pull the trim out so you have to be very careful when you pull the trim out so we're going to be tapping into two of the fuses there with those fuse taps that i've already shown you um got a crimper there going to be crimping the new cables to it and this is the new power cable and as i've said it has its own fuses so in here are the dash cam fuses for the system for the ignition switch and the non-ignition switch circuits so as long as i have as long as i'm protecting the car with regards to its existing fuse systems these will protect the dash cam so we're fine there's not going to be any issue all this additional cable i'm just going to cable tie up and then put back in um, one of the other wires that you'll notice there as well is an earth is a ground so i'll have to actually connect connect this wire to a proper bolt as well in the car to make sure it's properly grounded right so we finished the wiring we've got all the fuse jumps in all the fuse taps as they're called proper name for them and we've got the so we've got the connection in there we've got three connections one connection for um, ignition switch so when you switch ignition off the actual power will switch off um, we've got another connection which is continually connected to the battery um, for the parking mode and we've got an earth mode So now what I need to do is just tie clip up the actual cabling there to make sure it's all nice and neat and tidy and then push the bottom unit back in to locate it properly so it's properly fixed. Reconnect the battery properly and then put the uh, final bit of trim unit, tr final bit of trim back in which is behind the actual um, bit of trim here which is just held in by a screw which is a bit of carpet in effect. And then we will be done. So the next images you'll see will be of it all complete. So we finished the installation, tidied up all the cabling. It's all been now nicely, um, nicely tie clipped up and uh, put back together properly. I've been actually been, even been upside down in the actual um, driver's footwell just to make sure that all the cabling is correct and put back together and that the actual trim is located properly. So I'm a bit pedantic like that. But anyway, the car's back together, looks just the same as it did before. Of course, the benefits are now we've got the actual um, black view dash cam fitted now. Um, I've configured it all up as well and I've updated the firmware. So it's got its latest version of firmware on there and it's all configured up to the settings how I would want it to be when the car is driving normally and when we turn the ignition off and it goes into park mode. So it senses and records in, at certain stages when it's actually in park mode. It has a proximity sensor on it as well and it can also sense if um, not only just movement but also if the car's had a bump or a jar and it starts recording but obviously it would have slightly recorded beforehand as well because it has a buffer so it's quite cool like that. I've also configured it up so that when I get home it connects to my Wi-Fi system as well so it will push the videos that it's stored on the SD card up onto its Blackview cloud so I can then access the videos from the cloud as well so it's pretty cool how, it's, how, it, how it works. Modern day technology eh? Thanks a lot for watching guys. If you've enjoyed what you've seen then please click the thumbs up button and like the video. 
plenty more videos to come on the Saturday the 14th we've got the Broadway car show that we're that we're doing when the cars actually on show um, we're doing a demo run beforehand on the actual car show um, so it's a demonstration drive um, and that's been orchestrated that's been organized by the organizers of the event. We've got a particular slot as well on the green where the car will be parked. Um, so it should be pretty cool and really good event. And obviously we're gonna, as usual, we're gonna bring you some coverage of the event. I um, hope you really enjoy it and hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.